Good evening. We'll call the public speak out to order. Thank you for your patience. We had some technical difficulties with Focus Springfield. Uh, for the record, uh, there are a number of school committee members who were unable to attend this evening due to family obligations. Uh, Chris Collins, Vice Chair Josiah Gonzalez, uh, Attorney Peter Murphy is going to try to come on remote, but he has a family obligation on it. We have a, a very good number of speakers tonight. So unfortunately, uh, uh, our secretary, Patty McCarthy, will be timing you. You will have one minute so we can hear everybody speak. One minute to speak, and I appreciate uh, your attendance here. So the first one up is Crystal Bushi, please. Um, my name is Crystal Boucher. My address is 19 Eaton Street in Springfield. I'm here on behalf of the School Assignment Services employees to discuss the issues that we've had at bargaining. Um, currently, most of your most senior employees in the department are making less than newly hired and newly promoted employees, and the department doesn't seem to have an issue with that, but we do. In all other union shops that we represent, it's unheard of for new hires to make more than existing employees, but with management currently able to use their discretion when hiring and promoting, the pay disparity has become glaringly obvious and it's going to continue. And we've been trying to fix that issue. We have been asking for a one-time adjustment to address the discrepancies and have been told that it's unfair to give such big increases to some employees and small ones to others. But when you look at the differences in pay, our ask is not unreasonable. I'm here tonight to ask you to reconsider and to do the right thing by your employees and give them a fair wage and proposal. Thank you, Crystal, very, very much. <laughs> Linnea. I Torino. Linnea I Torino, if I pronounce your name wrong, please correct me. Linnea, thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Lanai and I'm a member of PVP. Springfield Public Schools handled the situation at Thai Tech with ignorance and failed to proceed with a proper protocol. Claims were made that lockdowns were initiated at both Putnam and SciTech. First person accounts from multiple students have stated that this wasn't the case. Most of them didn't even know they were in a lockdown. The school claims that they care about us and our safety, yet they won't even let their students know that there was a lockdown. Parents were also not informed of this and only found out through the news. With this gross mishandling of lack of transparency, it begs the question whether or not the school is capable of handling this, their kids if this had been a more dire situation. The lack of transparency from the district causes more harm than good. They lie about the fact that no one got injured and never told anyone about the lockdown. If we can't trust the district with the situation, then that begs the question if we can trust them at all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Madison Smith. Madison Smith, please. Good afternoon. I am Madison Smith, a junior at Putnam Academy. Of course, what happened at SciTech on Monday has plenty of people on the edge. Whenever there is an incident involving a gun in a school, we automatically think about the many school shootings that happen around the country. We cannot let that fear drive the conversation. We need to focus on the facts. The mayor and superintendent claimed that the Springfield Police Department had access to cameras inside the school during this incident and are claiming that the cameras are the main reason for minimizing harm and having a successful investigation. These statements are vague and don't really give any detail that demonstrate how the cameras actually helped. So the real question is, what role did the interior cameras play? It's time to stop playing on the fears and actually be transparent about what you did that actually protected the students. Shania Sylvia. Shania Sylvia, please. Thank you. 
Tanea. I'm a Putnam junior and teen leader here with PVP. In April of 2021, you know, a rule was made by four members of our school committee that allows our police department to access interior school cameras. I like to believe that it was done concerning the safety of our students, but it's not that simple. This policy was passed without informing students, parents, teachers, or administrators. You guys introduced it in one meeting, and then it was just passed. It doesn't make sense, it was done in complete secrecy. The same leaders are now praising the interior cameras as helping to address the incidents on Monday. Create a policy, tell no one about it, and then attempt to use a real incident to help you? The adults in charge of our district need to be held accountable for their actions. We didn't have a real lockdown at my school on Monday. The lack of school safety protocols can't be fixed by giving SPD access to our interior cameras. They need proper training as to how to handle an active shooter. May I suggest a drill? Real trained professionals to educate everyone. The camera policy at the school has made me and my peers uneasy and worried about our safety. Thank you very much. <laughs> Nevia Floundry? Nevia Flannery? I'm sorry. Nevia, I'm sorry. Come on up, Nevia. Good evening. My name is Nevea, and I'm a junior at SHA. What happened at SciTech on Monday is something that unfortunately can happen at any school at any time. What I'm wondering is, why did city leaders tell us that no one was injured in Monday's incident? We saw the images of the SciTech student with blood on him inside an ambulance. It is, is it because, from your perspective, that student didn't fit the description of what an appropriate victim should look like? This week, we watched as our school system wasn't honest with us, wasn't honest about the lockdowns, the injuries, and wasn't honest when you told us in the cameras our schools improved the outcome of what happened. How can we trust a system when they won't be truthful with us? We, sell, we see how the people at the highest levels in our city try to protect their image over trying their best to protect us. We may not be adults, but we see you. Do better be honest, and protect us. Thank you. Davion Pagan. Mr. Pagan. Good evening. For the past three days, you have failed to properly address the needs of the student body. We are the people you represent. Yet when we have something to say, you delete our comments and censor us. You accuse us of spreading misinformation, and yet you are the ones that lied. Well, lie one, you said no students were injured, yet a student was injured. Lie two, you said that there was a lockdown at SciTech, yet no official lockdown was announced. While we do realize that misinformation is scary, you know what's scarier? The lack of transportation, tra tra excuse me, transparency, transparency from our mayor, superintendent, and police superintendent. How can we trust our elected officials when they continue to lie to us? When you fail to properly inform the very same teacher standing behind me, when you fail to send a robocall to parents, and when you fail to take proper safety measures, it causes the public to mistrust you. It's a failure of accountability on you, Mayor Sarno, and you, Superintendent Warwick, to protect the students of Springfield Public Schools. <laughs> Naomi Edwards, please. Naomi Edwards. My name is Naomi Edwards. I feel that our leaders' role in Monday's events have definitely been downplayed through condescending language used by our elected officials. This is the first time in my entire lifetime that there has been an active shooter in a Springfield school, and school administrators in SciTech and Putnam did not follow proper safety protocol. Instead of taking account of accountability, our elected officials, especially Mayor Sarno, applauded their political allies, said no one was hurt, and then proceeded to blame students and lie on social media. 
There seems to be a lot of blame on students, as Mayor Sarno puts extra emphasis in his statement on st holding students accountable for what happened. I am no way excusing their actions, but school leaders in such a large district should have been prepared for this. Security personnel should have been trained and reactive to this situation. The schools should have actually been put in lockdown. Who are you to sit here and brag about your policies and avoid taking accountability for putting the students you're responsible for in danger? Stop using the events that took place due to your lack of prep preparation to criminalize us. Student lives are on the line, and Monday is a Aaron reminder Aaron Rodriguez. Of Aaron Rodriguez, please. Say again, Aaron Rodriguez. Say one more time, Aaron Rodriguez. Okay, we'll move to a... Okay, uh, Good evening. My name is Aaron and I'm a senior at SHA. In 2018, at the High School of Commerce, a student was picked up and slammed against the wall by a Quebec officer. He then lied on the police report and claiming that the student had assaulted him. A video was released showing that the Quebec officer had actually assaulted the student. The same people who are meant to keep us safe every day are also willing to tell lies to cover up the ways they don't actually keep us safe. In 2021, four members of the school committee voted to enact a policy allowing interior school cameras to be accessed by the Springfield PD without saying anything to students or parents. Is this policy really about keeping students safe? How can we trust the same people and institutions that have shown us that they are willing to twist the truth into a lie? You claim that the cameras are safety measure for your students, but what role did the cameras actually play when the incident at SciTech happened on Monday? You then decided to say that no student was injured, yet the student who was the target of the assault confirmed his injuries. This was a blatant lie. It is your responsibility as our protectors to give us accurate information and choose transparency every time. Thank you very much. Ahmad, Hamedi, Ahmad. Ahmed, thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ahmed, and I'm a student at SHA. I'm here before you today because I'm confused and I'm angry. As we know, on Monday, March 11th, a gun was fired inside SciTech, and a student was indeed injured. After looking at the various posts made by the official SPS account, only one thought stuck to my mind. Why would the same people who are responsible to ensure our safety is protected lie to us and publicly try to silence us? We were told that no students were injured, which wasn't true. And when we expressed what we felt was a lack of care for the situation, you disabled the comments and tried to silence us. However, after watching Tuesday's press conference, I noticed that the effectiveness of the camera was constantly brought up more than once, as being the whole reason why the situation didn't get worse. And I can't help but wonder if you're really being honest about that either. Destiny Cartonega. Destiny Cartonega. With, with PVP. Students have never truly felt safe, cared for, or encouraged in SPS schools. Whose hands does that lie on? You're the people who claim to care so much for us and do so much for us. How did that show up on Monday? We shouldn't have to fight for a better system and a better district, but here we all are. As a community, we come together to show you just how much we care about our safety in Springfield. When will you start caring? Not post a backhanded Instagram statement and then forget. Let's not forget Monday. You made a post on social media speaking about the incident. The statement claimed, and I quote, the safety of students and staff is the top priority for Springfield Public Schools, end quote. How did that play out on Monday? People were hurt and traumatized, and the day after, it just turned into a dream. We aren't forgetting, so why are you? Why did students have to return to school the day after a shooting? Why are you silencing us? Why did you silence us when we tried to use our voices under your post? Don't think it went unnoticed. It didn't. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ramesh. Ramesh Fodell. Ramesh. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ramesh Fodell, and I'm a student at SHA. Thank you for having me. I would like to bring up the uh, side tech incident. It was perplexing. How can a stranger simply be led into a school bypassing whatever so, uh, security protocol side tech followed? And he was allowed to wander around with a gun. 
How could this have happened when the district spends millions on cameras, and not to mention, the SEPA drill was held in the same school not so long ago? I don't understand how our district believes it's acceptable to try to hide incompetence. Alan Morales Perez, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Alan. Good evening. Okay. My name is Alan, and I'm a junior at Roger Oponum. And earlier this week, I witnessed the real condition of our safety protocols. A school right beside us was under severe threat, and we were let go like nothing was happening. At 2.20, while walking in the hallway, the only thing we were told that it was OK to leave, but it wasn't. There wasn't a lockdown, there wasn't an announcement, and there wasn't even a warning. Our mayor claims that we have a relatively safe school system, so tell me why our protocols failed when they were most needed. Tell me why there was no actual lockdown when a gun was fired inside a school building. Tell me why we must come up here and blatantly call you out on all your lies. There was no lockdown at Putnam or SciTech. There were people injured. There were no real protocols. After failing to protect us properly, you think the least you could do is cancel school simply for our safety and for the students' well-being. You didn't do that either. There was no announcement the next day. There was no phone call for our parents. There was just business as usual. Monday at SciTech and every surrounding school was far from that. Sylvan, Sylvan Velasquez, please. Sylvan Velasquez. Hello, good evening. My name is Selvin, and I'm a junior at Roger L. Putnam. After hearing about the shooting at SciTech on Monday, I checked on Instagram and Facebook to see what our district had to say about the matter. I was flustered to see two different narratives about the school shooting, one which presented the safety of the students on the Springfield K-12 Instagram account, and another where students had been injured as seen on the Springfield Police Department Facebook account. It was later on the day that Springfield K-12 fixed their mistake. Yet why is it that the comment section was turned off for the post on Instagram? Was it because students began to post about the truth and what they had experienced? Or perhaps it's because you weren't being completely transparent about what happened. The hypocrisy that exists within this district is absurd. Why claim you are serious about student safety and then shut the mouths of those who had a first-hand experience? Thank you very much. Dr. Paula Starnes. My name is Dr. Paula Starnes. I'm an employee with Springfield Public Schools, Putnam High School teacher, and I'm so sorry about what continues to go on in this district. Why is it that 1,500 students were dismissed from Putnam into an area where there was an active shooter? The time that the shooting occurred at SciTech was 2.10 p.m., but at Putnam at 2.17, students were released into that chaos. And some would say, well, this is an isolated incident, but it's not. I was in the building with the last shooting right in front of Putnam, and I got word on my phone from when I used to teach at AIC, Mr. Superintendent. So when I got the spot shotter and the information about right on our street at Putnam that there was a live shooting, no one else knew, but I knew to get my students away from the windows. Shame. Thank you very much. Tracy Little Sazanaki. Good afternoon. My name is Tracy Little Sazanaki, president of the Springfield Education Association, and we are from the SCA are here to address the gunfire incident that occurred Monday at SciTech. Many members of the Springfield Education Association are frustrated with what appears to be lack of communication around this serious episode and concerned that we were not safe in our schools given the incident unfold. The response to the incident itself did not adhere to protocols we adopted to protect students and staff when an armed person enters our schools. Ignoring these protocols contributed to the confusion that ensured and put students and staff at risk. Why weren't these safety protocols followed? 
Where did the system break down and why? Do we need to update our safety protocols around keeping students and staff safe? Our union has been advocating for a thorough debriefing of what happened, and we've gone answers unanswered. Every hour that passes without action is a missed opportunity to improve safety in our schools and communication within our school community. Thank you very much. Patience, Patience Mullins. Springfield Virtual School. What happened on Monday at SciTech is a, a reminder that our school's district safety pro protocols are not where they need to be. It's clear that the current SPS policy is not achieving what it's intended to do. Mayor Cerno and Superintendent Warwick, you have both claimed that having cameras inside the school made a big difference. But different, what difference did it actually make? You say the cameras are there for our safety, but the cameras also make us feel like we're being watched, as if we are the ones who are criminals. Maybe you should have considered improving the protocols. We know that having a positive impact on safety, things like real parents and offering support to students after traumatic um, incidents. What happened at SciTech could, could have happened at any of our schools, and it's clear that our district wasn't prepared. Now it's time for a better, to be get better prepared and keep students safe, because unfortunately this, there might be a next, a next time. Julius Lowe Wanamaker, please. Hello, my name is Julius Lowe Wanamaker, and I'm a student of SciTech. After events that happened on Monday, I feel like student safety is not the number one priority of our administrators and the people in pro pro power. Everybody was confused on Monday, even me. I was in school when it happened, and we only were made aware of it, of an admin or a teacher that was yelling in the hallway. Nobody was even taking that serious because no protocol was filed. Later, everybody did get in their classrooms. And on the intercom, we heard a female voice say it's okay to leave and to exit the building. Our principal then hurried up and rushed to tell her that wasn't the case and everybody get back in their classrooms. We were then eventually let out and let go home and I didn't find out until I went on social media and found out that there was an active shooter in the building. I recently spoke with a teacher and I feel like the events that happened on Monday with the metal detectors and the police officers were actually an attempt to make us safe, but rather an attempt to make us think we were safe. Thank you very much. Gisela Grimaldi. Good evening, my name is Giselle Grimaldi from the SCA. I come here with questions and frustrations with the lack of communication from administrations to the staff on Monday. My question is very simple with the blatant neglect of following rules. Who gets the unsatisfactory or needs improvements on their C's evaluations? Or better yet, who gets the 51A filed against them for the willful neglect of children by putting students in harm's way by not following the guidelines set down by this school committee and the district? Why would there's no communication to staff members of SciTech or offering a debriefing prior to students coming in on Monday morning so the staff could be shared their feelings and frustrations. You offered no counseling until school started and the staff needed to be heard before students got there. Not when students were there. Where was the feelings for your staff members? Thank you. Michael, Michael Pleswick. Michael. Michael Price Black, um, Professional Relations Associate for the Springfield Education Association. Uh, good evening, school committee. On March 11th, an incident occurred that shook our membership, students, and community to its core. What has exasperated these feelings based on a myriad now of students and staff experiences is how locked on port calls were not properly executed according to SPS policy, despite the claims to the contrary. Side tech while having administrators in the hallway yelling to students, didn't initiate anything over the intercom for eight to 10 minutes that there was a shooter in the building. At Putt 
Putnam. There was no lockdown at all, or announced to the teachers or the students. And they were allowed to leave at 2.18 while there was a shooter still in the area. These are violations of lockdown protocols set by SPS safety and security. We must ensure all staff and admin are properly trained for these protocols. We are lucky that this time nothing happened. Otherwise, next time we won't be so lucky. Joshua Matea Vega. Joshua Matea Vega. Say again, one more time. Daniel Hernandez, please. Daniel Hernandez. Say one last time, Daniel Hernandez. April Canulo, if I pronounce that name wrong, please come up, correct me. April? Yes, April Canuel. Okay, thank you. Are you on? I'm on Zoom. Okay, you said you were going to be in person. Okay, go ahead, dear. Oh. Um, okay. Hello, my name is April Canuel, and I am a paraeducator in the kindergarten through first life skills classroom. My address is 134 Carr Street in Springfield. Today, I am going to speak on why I enjoy working for SPS, but how it is very difficult for me and my colleagues financially. I love working with my students, and it is very rewarding to see their growth and advancement. Paraeducators are involved in all responsibilities of working in a classroom, and we build positive and trustworthy relationships with our students. Although it is very rewarding, it is very hard financially. We struggle to pay our bills. I, like many other paraeducators, work one or more jobs to try and make ends meet so that we can continue doing the jobs that we love. As paraeducators, we have many unpaid days as well. The living wage in mass has gone up about $6 an hour, but only paraeducators who have worked more than 11 years make that wage. I must emphasize that it is the bare minimum living wage. With the cost of living and for what we are accountable for as a paraeducator, we should be making 2 to $3 more an hour than that. Thank you for listening. Kathy. Kathy Mastronardi. Here. How are you, dear? Good. How are you, Mayor Sarno? Good. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor Sarno. Committee members Hurst, Gresham, Murphy, and Monroe Naylor, and I think Superintendent Warwick is there also. Every year, the first Wednesday of April is designated as National Paraprofessional Day. In Springfield, paraprofessionals include paraeducators, paraeducators in training, certified nursing assistants, licensed practical nurses, health assistants, assistant teachers, certified occupational therapy assistants, and physical therapy assistants. This year, April 3rd has been designated as National Paraprofessional Day. Superintendent Warwick has let the CS knows and all the principals know about the day. And Mrs. Kavan is going to uh, put some, excuse me, uh, put some things out on social media. The mayor has issued a proclamation as the, as the city council has also. I am Go ahead, Kat, just finish up. Thank you, last speaker. Oh, I'm respectfully requesting that the school committee do the same and would, would recognize the hard work of the paraprofessionals in the schools every day. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes the public speak out. We'll have a one-minute recess, and then we'll go into our formal meeting. Thank you very much.